This is my ancestral homeland, the land of the Cubby Cubby. From as far north as Wide Bay to as far south as Brisbane City. Songlines are the pathways we travelled, carrying our dreaming and stories along with us. Most which were conveyed through the songs we would sing as part of spiritual obligations to our ancestors, ourselves and our future generations. This system of songlines formed a network of pathways running the entire east coast and stretching as far as Western Australia. They are an extremely important part of our cultural landscape. They not only allowed us access to various parts of Australia, but served as a kind of fibre optic cable along which information could travel from one region to the next. Different groups utilise different song lines. For example, groups coming from the northwest, Kilcoy, Brisbane Valley or Nanango, followed a more westerly pathway. Inogra was their camp. Equally, people south of the Brisbane River followed a route that culminated in Karilpa, West End, where they had their major camp. Camp Hill was also a major camping ground and many of the Morton and Stradbroke Islanders would camp there. Landsborough is important because here you can still view some fragments of the traditional song line. This particular one was quite a highway in that so many groups travelled back and forth along this path. Hundreds, even thousands, from all over central, southern and western Queensland and northern New South Wales travel this route to and from the coastal hinterlands Bonya Bonya gatherings, which centred on Mullaney. Part of this song line is now known as Gympie Road. This road is Gympie Road and a very important song line for our people. It was one of the main thoroughfares for people to travel from south to north and north to south. It's sort of like the old fibre optic cable line for our people where information from one part of Australia would travel to another. This song line would have continued all the way to Victoria and all the way to Cape York. Many people would have utilised this song line and a lot of our dreamings and, and songs and stories travelled along this. Many people from northern New South Wales, from central Queensland, from western Queensland would have utilised this important song line. This song line is now known as Gimby Road. Petrie is named after an important pioneer in our recent history, Tom Petrie who was one of Brisbane's first free settlers. This is where Dullapai, the chief of the Turrbal tribe, resided during the late 18th and 19th centuries. All this land from Sanford to Redcliffe was Dullapai's spiritual homeland. He bestowed custodianship to Tom Petrie as he considered him his younger brother. We're here now at what is called Old Petrie Town, just on the outer edge of modern day Petrie. Dullapai befriended Tom Petrie when he was a young lad of eight and taught him language and even initiated him into young adulthood in the cubby cubby life. And from Tom Petrie, Dullapai learnt about the Western world. He also learnt of other people, but he had a long discourse with Tom Petrie. Dullapai, in, at the insistence of Dullapai, Tom Petrie came here and took up land. Dullapai's land and Dullapai's family and some of his people lived with the Petries in harmony at this place. Gympie Road, our ancient song line, dissects what is now known as Petrie on its way into Brisbane City. The Naja waterhole and Bora Ring in Nudgee are part of a larger complex of sacred and significant sites for my family and my family's ancestors. Dullipai, our tribal ancestor, belonged to the Turwan or Daroin social section or skin from the general surrounding area and would have come here and led ceremonies with his peers. And this is similar to a place where Tom Petrie would have been initiated. But this site is very significant. Significant for the fact that it has a waterhole right next to it. This is Nudgee Waterhole. And not far from us is the Bora Ring, the Boo. And this place is very significant because the Boole is so close to this waterhole. And usually, our water 
hold a, a bit further away from the Bora rings. So the Bora rings would be half a mile away or a mile away from a water hole. That's so that animals and other creatures can come and utilise the water hole and not be disturbed by us. This Bora ring has a relationship also to the Junjadi. And the Junjadi is what we call the little hairy man, which is part of our culture. The Junjadis were like our folk heroes, our heroes of plenty. They taught us how to make fire, they taught us how to make rope and string, they taught us how to make traps, but the most important thing they did was teach us how to share. And so that law of sharing was passed down from the Junjadi and through to us. And those divisions were carried on for thousands and thousands of years. Because the Junjadi was here before us, that little hairy man. This boar ring would also have a strong relationship with the rainbow serpent because it's so close to the water hole. So this particular bull has a strong significance to both the Junjadi and the rainbow serpent, Nanda to us, or Jagan. So I find this place a very special sacred place. And uh, people like Dalipai would be the master of ceremonies here. And initiates like the young Tom Petrie was, but also my great great grandfather, my great grandfather, would have come through the Bora Ring. The high hill in Bracken Ridge on the Barrett Street Reserve was once the perfect vantage point for a smoke signalling station. From here you can view Mount Nebo to the west, Morton and North Spradbroke Islands to the east, Beerburrum to the north and Mount Cotton to the south. Smoke signals allowed our ancestors a communication method over great distances in a short time. These smoke signals utilised a coded pattern of phrases and therefore information was limited in its transmission and reception. Today I still sometimes meet with relatives here. When European settlers first arrived, our old songline networks were the only available tracks through the land. They were also the easiest and quickest means of getting from one major resource or water source to another. Thus it is easy to see why white people often co-opted our songlines, utilising them for their horses and drays. Many of today's major roads, streets, stock routes and road reserves are our old song lines. One song line passed through the area we know as Eagle Farm today. This is Eagle Farm. This is where the, when the first settlement down here in Brisbane was established, they wanted to put a farm here and my people allowed for that farm to be here. This is the spot, the Dala, a subgroup of the Cubby Cubby and also known as the Undambi, leased to the first settlers as farmland. This place had particular significance to the people of the Eagle Totem and Moiety. Dalipai and people of his Moiety considered the Eagle as brethren to them. Prior to settlement, the area was an important hunting ground and food gathering area. Dalipai himself, when in the area, would stay at the old campsite closer to Breakfast Creek. Once Dalipai's tribal skin brother, Dalinkwa, a district headman attempted to collect the rent in the form of food on behalf of his people. This was a standard measure with the fighters amongst my people, as compensation for white people using their resources. For this he was shot in the hip. This action by the settlers was not acceptable to the Bora Council representatives of the Cubby Cubby, and through guerrilla warfare the settlers were driven back towards the Brisbane city area, on the other side of Breakfast Creek. I remember as a as a kid, when my mum brought me here to the races, she was telling me that this was a, um, a farm once. My mum told me the story about Eagle Farm. And it's real funny because then I read Petrie many, many, many years later, when I'm in my like early 30s, and the things I read in there, my mum's told me about when I was 10, 11, you know, years of age. When we used to travel through the glass house and travel different parts, Mum would tell me stories about our history and, and, and people from our past and those parts of the la landscape and those landmarks. I didn't really um, understand or appreciate that as a kid, but now that I'm an older person, an older man, it all fits into place. 
Breakfast Creek is another special place where my people camped and a place where Dalapai often stayed. There were actually two camps here. One was on the rise above the creek, which is now Hamilton, where senior initiated men would camp. The other camp was situated at the bottom of the rise, now known as the Albion Park Harness Racing Track. It was a general camping ground occupied by the Jalla people. On the other side of Breakfast Creek, not far from the general camp, where Newstead House is today, my mother told me our important people were laid to rest. This is the mouth of Breakfast Creek, which runs into the Brisbane River. Now this is a very significant creek. This marks a boundary where we pushed the settlement across because of what happened at Eagle Farm, where the settlement wouldn't pay rent. And we got shot at. So we ran the settlers over this creek. Just on the other side here, you have Newstead House. And Newstead House represents colonial Queensland. And to me, the Breakfast Creek camp, where our great statesman, Dullapai, sent out the indictments to our Anglo-Saxon brothers, he sent these indictments out at that place. And to me, that signifies a very special place to us, where we made our representation through our great statesman, Dullapai. We eventually ran out of that place when the native police were brought here. But we held this land for something like 20 to 30 years after settlement. After the Dalinqua shooting, the settlers were driven out of Eagle Farm by my people and they had to start a new farm in another area that became known as New Farm. This place was known to us as Pinkumba, which means where the turtles are from. At the time there were a number of water holes in the area. Turtles were collected and eaten here. Dalapai was making his way to the new farm area from Balimba, which was originally called Tugulua when he caught a cold and died. This is Roma Street Parkland. This is also a ceremonial fighting ground for my ancestors. And people from many places would come here to witness the ceremonial fights which occurred down below here on the flat. People from hundreds of kilometres around would come here, from as far as Bundaberg, Lismore, Dolby, Eidswold, would come and witness the ceremonial fights that occurred here. A man wasn't a man unless he participated in the ceremonial fight, which occurred at the end of initiation. I'm sitting here in this man-made amphitheatre, which is in within Roma Street, Parklands, which was our natural amphitheatre, you can get an understanding of how we utilise this area, as where the people would sit up and below down there, we use our, is where the fight would take place. I can imagine sitting here amongst the thousands of people supporting their various warriors and new initiates and their elder warriors, supporting them, singing out. It just makes my heart beat. Just Imagine them. Just being in amongst that crowd would have been ecstatic. Another important area in Brisbane was Barambin or York's Hollow. This was the closest camp to Brisbane town. A portion of it we know today as Victoria Park, although it once extended far beyond that area. The reserve previously encompassed the area from Kelvin Grove College, Royal Brisbane Hospital, the Ecker Grounds and into Roma Street where the fighting grounds were. This area originally had a beautiful string of water holes running through the middle. It's now all drained except for one small pond. This is Post Office Square in the heart of modern Brisbane. But to my people, it was the gallows. This is where our great warrior Dunderley was hanged in 1855. A lot of people turned up for the execution, some of those being the early settlers, and some of those being my people, the Cubby Cubby. They were present at is what is now Central Station. There was a hill there, and it was a vantage point for people to watch the various executions that occurred here. This is not far from the ceremonial fighting grounds at Roma Street Parklands, where our law was administered where our justice was served. 
We never practiced the hanging of murderers, but would execute people either by a blow to the back of the head with a wadi or nulla nulla, or if the case was in relation to a minor infringement of the law, maybe they would have made him stand up and fend off spears thrown by the aggrieved party at a close distance until he was speared. West End and Highgate Hill were known to us as Karilpa. It was a large camping ground for many groups from the south and southwest. The pocket of the river here was a rich area. A lot of vine forest where my people could hunt bandicoots and other game. People from south and west would camp at Karilpa and swim or canoe across during the day to either participate in the fight or be a spectator. This big camp stretched all the way roughly from Highgate Hill and Musgrave Park to Wollongabba where another string of water holes lay. At the Wollongabba end there was once a ceremonial ground. Kurilpa camp housed all the southern and southwestern tribes that came to Brisbane. It was also towards South Bank, a bit of a marketplace for my people and the white residents. The white people would come here to barter for whatever they needed. Ferns, baskets, fresh fish, feathers, firewood, fur pelts, shellfish, or maybe just to recruit casual workers to haul water or do domestic chores. By the late 1800s, streets called Boundary Streets bordered both sides of Brisbane at West End and at Fortitude Valley, quite close to where the large villages of Barambin and Kurilpa once lay. My people weren't allowed to venture past these streets come evening. They could tell where they had to stop by the boundary posts. If any of my people did cross these boundaries late in the day, or happened to be still within town in the evening, they were whipped and driven out by police on horseback. Despite such restrictions, my people kept up their connection with Karilpa. They kept returning to Musgrave Park and nearby areas whenever they could. Now Musgrave Park is an important centre and meeting place for all the Brisbane Indigenous community.